Greetings accounting students. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with a plug for a clip that I created earlier in the year where, where I did a theoretical overview of the balance sheet, where I went into a bit of detail about our criteria or our definition of the three elements that appear in the balance sheet, our assets on the left and our liabilities and owner's equity on the right and placed a high degree of emphasis on the fact that the balance sheet relates to the accounting equation. So on the left, we've got our resources, the assets of the business, and on the right, we've got the claims on those assets. So the external claims being the liabilities and the internal or residual claims in terms of the owner's equity. Now, there are a variety of source materials that students can be exposed to when asked to complete a balance sheet at the end of a reporting period. We could simply have a table with a list of accounts um, with their final balance, and then you'll be asked to basically prepare a classified balance sheet. Or you might get a cash flow statement, which is where I'm going with this clip. So to keep things neat and tidy on this uh, screen and make this a bit more user friendly for the viewers, I'm going to be zooming in um, into this cash flow statement. And I'm going to start at the bottom, right here. So right at the bottom of our cash flow statement, we have our final bank balance. Now, if that was positive, we'd put that as a current asset because it would represent a economic resource. In this case, that money is owing to the bank. So therefore that represents a future sacrifice of those funds when eventually that overdraft is settled with the bank. So we're going to list that as a current liability. We're just gonna call it bank 125,430. Now I'm gonna clean this up for the next slide and we're gonna go back up to the top of the cash flow statement. So here we are in the cash flow from operations. We're looking at the inflows here from our day-to-day -day activities. Now, the first one we've got is cash sales. Cash sales is revenue. Revenue doesn't appear in the balance sheet. It goes in the income statement. So we don't need to worry about that um, for our balance sheet. GST received will increase our liability to the ATO. I'll deal with that a bit later. Let's look at our accounts receivable. So when we have credit sales and the GST that's tacked onto that, the twofold effect of that transaction is it creates accounts receivable. These are the customers that owe us money um, from us providing goods on credit. So if we look at a little subtotal here, we had a balance from the previous quarter of 20,500. So I've just generated this table show how we get the balance. We've gone to our sales journal um, and got our total, which includes the GST, 14850. So we're going to subtotal that, 351350, um, I should say. And then we're going to deduct what we've collected from the customer. So we're just going to less receipts. 15,100, so that gives us a final balance of 20,250. Now that's going to go in the current assets because that balance represents a resource um, that will result in the inflow of an economic benefit cash when those customers settle their debts. So we just call that accounts receivable. 20,250, okay. Here we have our outflows, operating outflows. Advertising is an expense that's going to go in the income statement, ditto with interest and same with rent. Now the GST payments, that's going to reduce our uh, liability to the ATO. I'll deal with those on the next slide. So as was the case with our accounts receivable, we need to do some calculations here for accounts payable. So, Again, as a result of the credit purchases of materials um, with the GST attached, the twofold effect of that is that we create um, accounts payable that we owe to these suppliers. 
So in order to work out our final balance, we need to go back to our starting balance. We look at our purchaser journal, get our total there. So our subtotal 39,950. Then we're going to subtract the amount that we've paid. So payments is 21,450. And so we're back to where we started from 18,500. Now this final balance here, that represents a current liability because that will result in the future sacrifice of economic benefit when we pay up our suppliers based on their credit terms. So we're going to put that in our current liabilities as account payable 18,500. Now, if I go too fast on this one, I have made a separate clip on how to calculate the GST balance by referring to the four special journals along with uh, the opening balance. So you can check that out on my channel. So I'm going to do a kind of somewhat rushed version of this. So first of all, we need to work out our opening balance. And during the period we had a settlement of 12.50, so we squared the account with the ATO, so we've got a zero subtotal after that. Then we go to our sales journal, uh, if we have had credit sales, which we have in this case, 13.50, and then we add the GST that we've collected. So that is three, if I've got that right here, 3.750. So we're gonna subtotal that, that's 5,100. Then we are going to offset that GST with what we've been charged by our suppliers, accounts payable, 1950. And then in our payments journal, there's another 380. So to work out our final balance, we just need to get that 5100 subtotal and subtract that 2330 um, to from the payments and what we've been charged by our suppliers. And that gives us. 2770. So, because that's a positive figure, that means that we must pay um, when the BAS statement is done the ATO. So, that will result in a settlement in the next quarter. So, we just call that GST payable in our current liabilities because it will result in a sacrifice of an economic benefit in terms of the funds that we will pay to the ATO. All right, it gets a little easier from here. Now, we're in the middle part of our cash flow statement with our investing activities. Now, investing activities are non-current assets. We're investing in some resources of the business. So when we have a negative figure here, that means that we've actually made a purchase. So again, the negative figure means that it's reduced our cash, but the twofold effect means we've got more building. So we're going to bang that in our NCA section of our balance sheet for half a mil here. And we've also bought a vehicle. So if it was a positive figure, that would mean we've received proceeds from the sale of it. These are negative figures. These are acquisitions. 25K. So, so financing activities, these impact the equities of the business. Let's start with a loan. So we've borrowed 300K here, presumably to pay for that building, and we've already paid 20K off. That's negative. So therefore, we're just going to subtract that 20 from the 30K that we borrowed. Some of that would be current, but there's no detail on that. So I'm just going to bang all of that into our non-current liability because we're going to need to pay Westpac the rest of that 280k owing. So again, if we had the amount payable per annum, some of this would in fact go into our current liabilities. Don't have that details here. We've also reduced our mortgage. Um, so because it's negative, that means we've made a payment on the mortgage. So that would, again, be potentially for some type of property. So we just bang that in there. I don't know the opening balance here. So we just make a little note that we're going to reduce that by 3,000. OK, now there was a capital contribution of 30K. So that reduces, that increases the residual claims 
on the asset. So that's going to in increase our owner's equity in terms of a capital contribution. So we'd add that to whatever the balance was at the start. And then drawings basically is uh, reducing our residual claims. The owner's taken out some cash for personal use. So we're going to deduct that from our owner's equity account, 15,000. Now, there is just the one figure that from the income statement that will also appear in the owner's equity, and that's the net profit. So if we go to our income statement, revenue minus expenses equals 20,000, uh, 46,700. That also is going to go into our owner's equity because that's going to increase the owner's residual claims on the asset. So we're going to add that to our capital. So always remember that when you're doing a balance sheet, if there's been any trading or services provided, then you're going to include your net profit or your net loss in your OE section of the balance sheet. So therefore, we end up with assets equals liabilities plus owner's equities. Again, be mindful that when you're completing your balance sheet, that some of these items are going to require you to refer to different journals, bank balance we get from the cash flow, net profit we get from the income statement, and many of these other ones are going to um, carry over due to the going concern uh, assumption from previous periods.